Hello, this is Mr. Coates, and this is APE's lecture number 58 on Introduction to Solid and Hazardous Waste. As Americans, we produce quite a lot of waste, and that waste gets uh, either thrown away or gets trucked somewhere else. Sometimes it's recycled, sometimes it's hazardous. So this lecture is all about the introduction to that, and then we'll get into some specifics later on in other lectures. A lot of the waste that we create is waste that is just containers. Containers uh, for different things it could be cardboard boxes that we store stuff in or we get products in. It could be plastic containers, we'll drink bottles, things like that. So that's the kind of waste we're talking about when we talk about just solid waste. However, hazardous waste can come in those bottles. So this group of bottles over here, this is a group of cleaners that you find underneath the kitchen sink, and these can be considered hazardous waste. Typically, when you think about hazardous waste, they think about these guys in these weird suits that sample things and deal with really toxic substances. But a lot of hazardous waste can be right in your own home, so we're going to look at that. So first of all, what is solid waste? Well, solid waste is any discarded stuff that we don't want that's not liquid or gas. And so we most commonly call it garbage or trash, but it can be composed of different things. So it can be tires, it can be batteries from cars or from electronic devices, it can be electronic devices themselves, it can be just refuse that we throw away everyday basis. Whatever humans do though, we always have some kind of trash. Even uh, ancient cultures had trash. If you look around Florida, we have what we call shell middens, and these mounds are basically just piles of leftover seashells from when the Native Americans that lived here ate snails and then just piled up the shells as trash piles. And so these old vestiges of dumps from the Native Americans. And so trash has been around a long time. And so we want to kind of see specifically uh, what we can do about it. All right, so let's look at some waste statistics here in the United States. The United States is about 4.6% of the world's population. However, we produce most of the waste. So about a third of the waste in the world is, solid, is produced in the United States, and about 75% of the hazardous waste produced in the world is produced in the United States. And this is because of our society where we purchase many things and we create many things and, and, and we just have the money to do this kind of thing. And so all that influence of that money, uh, our commercial society, basically produces all this stuff and so we have to get rid of it in some fashion or we have to figure out a way to lessen it. So if we look at this graph down here, it shows the waste generation around the world of pounds per person per day and of course the United States is up here. We produce about 4.5 to 5 pounds of waste per person per day. That's quite a lot. Five point, For example, a full gallon milk jug weighs about 8 pounds so get rid of about uh, a little bit less than half of that and you got about five pounds and that's quite a lot of garbage for each person per day. So it includes the, the, the drink containers, any packaging that you throw away during the day, it includes any kind of uh, facial tissues, any kind of toilet paper, whatever we throw away, all that is included in that mass or that weight. Go look down the list here and there are countries that produce far less than us. For example, Japan here produces about half of what we do. Uh, and then you get even farther down to uh, Mexico. Mexico produces very little trash compared to us, 1.9 pounds per person per day. If you look over at this other graph over here then, it looks like this is just for the United States. So this is a total municipal solid waste. And municipal solid waste is that waste that everybody throws away in, in their garbage can. So we have total solid waste, and this is generation in million of tons per year, okay? And you can see that in the United States since 1960 all the way up to about uh, 2003 here, we were increasing our solid waste generation in the United States. Uh, thankfully, since then, we've kind of leveled off a little bit, and I think this is partly due to some of the drives towards recycling in this country more than anything. Hopefully that continues to stay level or decrease. The other thing is is that our per capita generation is also kind of leveled off ever since about 1995. The peak of our generation was about 4.74 pounds per person and so now it's gone down to about 4.4 in this graph. You can kind of see how we produce our trash and it's going down a little bit per person in the United States but still higher than most countries. So where does the solid waste come from? I've mentioned several places before but most of it comes from extracting resources. Believe it or not, the average person doesn't create the amount of waste that is created from all of the United States. It's, it's basically 
created by the extraction and the uh, obtaining of all those natural resources that we need in order to make our stuff and power our well, automobiles and so forth. So mining is the number one creator of solid waste. And if you think about it, if, if you're uh, a strip mine and you have to get rid of 10 to 12 feet of overburden over top of the mine, and the mine is several hundred acres, that's a lot of waste. That All that overburden is considered waste. And so mining actually per ton has the largest amount of waste. Here's an example of mining uh, waste. In Florida, we have phosphate mines, and these phosphate mines take a lot of uh, phosphate containing minerals out of the earth and then they process them and the processing then creates these big piles called uh, gypsum stacks and it's basically a big pile of gypsum and then at the top is a big acidic pool of water at the top so this is all considered mining waste as well oil and gas production is is next in line and so uh, those things produce a lot of waste like uh, drilling sludges other waste for building plants and things like that, but uh, they produce a lot of waste as well. Agriculture produces a lot of waste, and most of the agriculture wastes are leftover food crop residues, things like uh, corn cobs and corn husks and things like that. And so all of that is considered as solid waste. And so it's mostly organic and biodegradable, thankfully. Uh, the next largest producer of waste is sewage treatment. We've talked about that there are some solids left over in sewage treatment, and so when we treat our sewage, that solid usually goes to a landfill or has to be dealt with in some way. And then the last one is industry, and so that includes like pallets or cardboard boxes or waste pieces for manufacturing. Like if, if you cut out metal pieces, you're going to end up with scrap metal. And so, thankfully, a lot of that metal can be recycled, but that's still considered solid waste. Now, the other 1.5% comes from you and I. This is called municipal solid waste, or MSW, and basically just commonly known as garbage. This is, is a very little amount uh, compared to the total amount uh, in the United States or in the world here. But 1.5% from municipal solid waste from you and I. But it'd still be nice to get that down. All right, some examples of municipal solid waste. Trash bags. We send more trash bags to the landfill than other countries spend for all their goods. I mean, we spend a lot just on trash bags. It's kind of hard to fathom. Aluminum cans. Even though aluminum cans are highly recyclable, Americans still throw enough to rebuild our airline fleet every three months. Think about how much aluminum that is. That's crazy. Aluminum is a, is a great natural resource. It can be recycled and reused, and we just end up throwing it away. Diapers. Up here we have a picture of a child and all the diapers that child will go through in its lifetime. This is for one kid. A ton of diapers. And these diapers, you got to remember, not only are they made out of plastic and some other stuff, but they also have human waste in them. And human waste carries all kinds of bacteria and viruses and pathogens. So you got to account for all that human waste inside all these diapers too. Plastic bottles. Tons of plastic bottles get thrown away. Unfortunately, they're all recyclable too. Edible food. I can't tell you how many times I see people throwing away stacks and plates of food that just hasn't been eaten. We are eyes are always bigger than our stomachs it seems like and we don't take the food home for leftovers and uh, unfortunately we, we waste a lot of food in this country and then junk mail and I've already talked about this before but uh, the junk mail is just out of control almost half of the drunk mail that's sent out is never opened it's just thrown directly into the trash and all of this could also be recycled the fastest growing type of waste is e-waste we are in the electronics age Used electronics and electronics that have gone out of date are becoming to be the most numerous types of waste found in landfills and in our waste stream. And unfortunately, a lot of our e-waste is uh, exported somewhere else so they can deal with it. So in the United States, we don't have to deal with our e-waste that much. It gets sent to other countries. And then poor people in developing countries then are uh, basically their job is to take apart all the e-waste and try and recycle as much as possible. And unfortunately, with a lot of this e-waste, there's lots of heavy metals involved, some nasty chemicals involved, and a lot of these people get sick and die because they deal with this e-waste all the time. There's a lot of heavy metals in there. If you look at this picture down here, these ladies are going through all the wiring and things from computers, and they're sorting all this and dealing with this. Just think about how many phones you've thrown away in your lifetime. You're not very old. You probably get a phone almost every year, which is crazy. I mean, you should be able to hang on to a phone for several years. But most people like to get the newest and greatest thing. Uh, and I, I don't understand that for the most part because most of the time a phone does the same thing. It might have a little bit better camera, but 
there's really not that much new on a new phone, except that it new, looks new and everybody else has got one, so why not I? Uh, and that's not the right attitude to have when it comes to waste, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. One of the things we could do to try and reduce this e-waste is have a cradle-to-grave approach. This would make the manufacturers responsible, so companies like Samsung or Apple. And instead of just selling these devices, they would have a program to recycle these themselves, and they would be responsible for that. And if those companies could get on board with that and take care of that, then our e-waste would probably be a, a, a less of a problem. In fact, they might start building phones that don't have to be uh, bought every single year if they also had to deal with it. All right, so other trash uh, that we put out. Uh, if we look at this family of four people, so we got four people here and about 122 pounds of food thrown out each month. I mean, that is insane. Vegetables, 24 pounds. Sweeteners, uh, sugars and things like 15 pounds. Meat and fish, 10.4 pounds. This is per month, and all this food that's wasted could go to feed other people or could go to other things like composting, but yet it sits in our landfills and decomposes and causes problems later on, and we'll talk about what those issues. All right, so some composition in the United States. What is our municipal solid waste made out of? Um, and this is before recycling, and this is in 2013. It's the most up-to-date graph that I could find. Paper is still the big one. Paper's been a big one for a long time. We throw away more paper than anything else. A lot of people think it's plastics, but actually paper's bigger than anything. The next one's yard trimmings, so grass cuttings, leaves, stumps, the, the next most. And then, once again, a big one, food waste. Food waste is actually bigger than plastics. And then you got some other ones down here that you see. Um, let's look at our recycling in the United States, this graph over here. So uh, this is very similar to the previous graph, but this is about recycling million tons. So this tells you the uh, total amount of municipal solid waste that was produced that could be recycled. So uh, that's what this graph is. So back in um, 1960, it was about 5.6 uh, million tons a year. And now we're up to about 87.2 million tons a year of waste created in this country that can be recycled. However, we only recycle about 34% of that. And that's unfortunate. We don't recycle that much at all. And uh, this country could really do a, a great deal of good environmentally as well as cutting cost of, of obtaining new fresh resources by recycling a majority of this up here. And unfortunately, we just don't do a very good job of recycling in this country. So why do we want to get rid of this solid waste and deal with it properly? Well, a lot of it is harmful. Uh, a lot of it can, can lead to disease and pestilence. Uh, you can get all kinds of unwanted critters. If you ever go to the dump, there's always birds flying around, but there's rats around that can carry diseases. Uh, there's a lot of fire potential with dumps. Every year you see uh, landfills that catch on fire or tire dumps that catch on fire and burn for quite a long time. Uh, they also create water and air pollution. Uh, there's a lot of chemicals that come off this, like methane, CO2, cause all kinds of air pollutant problems and greenhouse gas emissions. And then uh, water pollution, when it rains on top of an old dump, all the water that percolates down through that garbage picks up all the waste that's in there and dissolves it and then moves it to the aquifer or a water body. And that's not very healthy either because there could be all kinds of heavy metals in that. And then uh, obviously a dump is not pretty to look at and it doesn't really smell that great. If you've ever been to the dump, you know the smell kind of sticks with you for a long period of time. So we really want to keep our solid waste down to a minimum and we want to make sure we dispose of it properly. Well, I hope that helped you uh, get an introduction to solid and hazardous waste. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to bring them to class.